Good morning everyone, I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia. Today I'm delighted to be talking to Dr. Mohammed, who is in Iraq. Hello Dr. Mohammed. how are you today? Hi Rachel, I'm fine, and you? Good, thank you. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, I, I'm really keen to have a chat to you about the work that you do um, in Iraq with children with clubfoot. Um, but before we delve into that, perhaps you could just uh, introduce yourself to the people watching. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do there. Yeah, uh, my name is Muhammad Alwash. Uh, I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon. Uh, my field is ortho pediatric orthopedic, uh, mainly cases of uh, clubfoot and DDH, uh, but I, I also do some cases of trauma. Uh, I am working in Najaf, Iraq, in Al Hakim General Hospital, uh, and I also have uh, a weekly uh, clubfoot clinic and the PIS unit uh, of Assad Teaching Hospital. I got my training mentorship program in on City Method in Iowa University Hospital uh, at uh, 2014. Uh, at that time, they advised me to develop a clubfoot clinic in Iraq, and uh, that's what happened at 2015. Uh, where we established uh, the first clubfoot clinic in Iraq uh, after getting, of course, the official uh, agreement of the Minister of Health and, uh, of course, with the support of uh, ICRC team in Iraq. Uh, the team of clubfoot uh, clinic uh, in our hospital is doing all the stages of Pond City Method. Uh, in the clinic, starting from assessment, uh, manipulation, pressing, uh, family education, and ending with uh, tenotomy, pressing, and uh, long term follow up. It's excellent. So it sounds like it's a pretty new service that you're working on. Um, so two years you've been running up and running in Iraq. Um, what were the challenges that you faced when you set up the service? Yeah, oh, uh, good question, Pete. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, uh, there's many challenges because, you know, it is uh, relatively a new method to be managed in Iraq. So. Uh, there's uh, some people who, who, who refuse us, refuse the method, uh, but uh, with the support of uh, our team, with the support of the ICRC, and with the support of MOH, we can continue and uh, proceed with uh, our uh, program of uh, clubfoot management. And so how, um, how many children have you seen, or do you see, or how many children are there in Iraq with clubfoot? Is it quite um, prevalent? Um, how many children do you have coming into the clinic? Yeah, you know, uh, in Iraq, the community is a fertile community, so we, we managed to have uh, a good number of uh, patients in our clinic. Uh, we can see about 20 to 30 patients in every week, and uh, these are uh, different management, either casting or follow-up or placing or management or even tenotomy. That's excellent. That's, that's, a, that's quite a big number of children that you're seeing every week. It sounds like the service is really quite strong and active. Um, so what kind? who's on the team in your clinic or with your service what uh, which health professionals do you have obviously you're the orthopedic surgeon um, and who else is on your team yeah uh, our team is composed of about 10 or more than 10 person between physiotherapist orthotist and even we have a person who's uh, responsible of family education we have another orthopedic surgeon with us uh, we have uh, some guys about, uh, responsible for uh, removal of uh, POP. So we are more than 10% of the team. 
Excellent, that sounds like a great service. And I know your particular interest is um, in sort of post-surgical relapse. So um, what kind of, do you want to tell us a little bit about the outcomes that you see? And then um, perhaps we can talk about your um, particular area of interest. Yeah, uh, comparing to the developed country, we, we are facing a significant number of uh, kids uh, who underwent uh, surgery and coming for relapse. Uh, so, uh, so is this, can know, I just, sorry, can I just ask, is this people that had surgery before you set up your clinic or um, is this new people that have been through your service? No, uh, no. Uh, some of uh, patient uh, uh, underwent surgery before clinic and some of uh, them after uh, the clinic, you know, there's some surgeons still using surgery to collect the club food uh, in our country. And that's why we are still receiving uh, those patients with the post surgical relapse. Uh, dealing with the patient post post surgical relapse, you know, it's not uh, uh, an easy job. Uh, as Ignacio Ponsetti said, there may, uh, after surgery, there's much fibrosis, much uh, adhesions between tendons, ligaments, and soft tissue, you know, and there may be skin changes like scarring and tightness of the skin, and there may be even body changes in, in the field of operation. So it is, uh, that's why it's a difficult job. Uh, we have to plan more uh, well and to assess well, and we have to inform the family about uh, that the period of the, the period of the treatment may last more than that for ordinary club food management. There may need uh, maybe tendon transfer surgery, and uh, we may need to use general anesthesia to do tenotomy because they are an older children, and they may need the uh, release of adhesions of the soft tissue, and uh, sometimes. Um, about bracing, about bracing, we have to keep the brace. And all the children beyond four years, we have to keep the brace uh, two years after the treatment. So it sounds like it sounds like in the situation of the post-surgical relapse, or or if they're coming to you from a different service that hasn't quite been. Um, effective it sounds like it's way more complicated because the child is older and there's fibrosis from the original surgery so it sounds like does it take uh, longer for um the correction in the post-surgical relapse than it does in the ordinary child or the child that hasn't had an intervention yet yes it takes older uh, you know the ordinary diopathic uh, club foot may take four uh, to five sessions of uh, manipulation and casting, but in those uh, post-surgical relapse may take eight sessions of uh, manipulation and casting, and followed, uh, of course, by genotomy. Yeah, and then it sounds like, <coughs> excuse me, they have, um, they're more likely to need the tendon transfer um, as a surgery as well, is that correct? Yeah, they, uh, most of them, they need uh, tendon transfers. And then if they go through, um, so the, the children that you see that are post-surgical relapse, in a post-surgical relapse situation, um, and they go through your service, do you see good outcomes with those children? Yeah, uh, uh, as I said, uh, they need good assessment for, uh, for, uh, for flexible food. Flexible food, the, the, the outcome is good. <laughs> Uh, the outcome, uh, but for rigid club food, especially if there is bony changes, uh, the, the outcome may, uh, may be less than that for the flexible food. And what so, kind, so what kind honest, of, be, sorry, what kind of chain, body changes do you mean um, that where, where the outcome you, might not be as good? You, need, uh, you, you know that some surgeries, uh, uh, use uh, uh, osteotomy, lateral osteotomy procedure. So, the, the, of course, if they do a lateral uh, osteotomy procedure, then there is uh, bone changes. So, it, it is a uh, rigid club foot cannot be collected by manipulation and, ca and casting. 
and also there may be uh, osteoarthritis of the ankle and uh, of the intertarsal joint. Those people also, those patients also, uh, we may face difficulty to correct them with the uh, one centimeter. Yeah, so it sounds like if they have a good flexible foot that the outcome is probably quite good with the if you go back and do a normal Ponsetti uh, management protocol with them. But if they have those other changes from their original surgery, then then it's difficult to get the outcomes that you're looking for. Yeah. It, uh, and to, in those situations, are you able? Is there other things that we can do? Is there more intervention through physiotherapy or anything like that that makes a difference to those children that don't have the um, sort of desired outcomes that we are hoping to get for them. Yeah, for those patients uh, in which uh, we fail to correct uh, club foot uh, deformity, we can refer them for uh, other surgical procedure like Elizalov. Like which one, sorry? Uh, Elizalov procedure, external fixator and uh, uh, cor correction, uh, gradual correction by. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, so it sounds like you. There are quite a lot of challenges in your clinic, particularly because it's a new service, and you're um, seeing children that have been managed um, with different interventions that aren't the Ponsetti method that we sort of use these days. Um, that have been you had a different intervention prior to your service being in Iraq. Um, how? What kind of? Um, that's quite a lot of challenge for you as a service. Does it? Uh, is there any ways, anything you've changed, sort of as the team or in the service, that particularly to address those situations that might be able to help other services that are in the same situation? Yeah, really. Our aim in, uh, as a team, as a clubfoot team in Iraq, is to uh, diffuse the one city method as a, a method of. Uh, uh, to treat club food. So we uh, try to uh, train other uh, doctors, other personnel about the uh, city method. We uh, try to do uh, workshops. We did a workshop in, in the north of Iraq. We did another a workshop in the south of Iraq. We did uh, a lectures and workshop in the capital Baghdad about the city method. And also, uh, we, our aim is to make uh, a clothing clinic in each big city in Iraq. And that's why, uh, that's uh, what we try to do here in Iraq. So, uh, much education uh, to establish uh, a, a city method as a, a method of choice to treat the clothing. Yeah, yeah. Education is the is the way forward, isn't it? The more people that we can educate in the Ponsetti method and and of how effective that is, then then the outcomes are only going to get better, aren't they? As time goes by, and I think you as a service face a lot of challenges because you haven't had this new service in the country before, and you've only been around for two years. So as as time goes by, um, and you manage to see all the children that have previously had other surgeries or whatever, I think um, it's going to be a positive outcome for children with club foot in Iraq. So I must congratulate you on setting up the service and the good things that you're doing there. Um, thank you. And thank you for sharing your, you know, your experience of the post-surgical relapse, because it sounds like that's, that's a certainly a situation that um, is fairly, probably fairly unique to some countries. And, and as you say, it's a situation that is occurring in Iraq. So thanks for sharing that experience with us. Is there anything else that you've learned through setting up the service or running the service with your team um, that you'd like to share with people around the world that others might be able to learn from? Yeah, uh, I, I, for, for the participant, I recommend them to, tra to train and train, train and to try to diffuse the city method in, in their countries and I wish them uh, uh, a good luck in this course. Uh, well, thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed, for talking to us today. Um, it's really interesting to hear about your work and everything that your team is getting up to in Iraq. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you.